So now we're going to learn about unfurling. And that's my word. And I use that word because I haven't found anywhere in the language specification or in Effective Go a word for describing what I'm going to show you. I've talked about this before. But now we're going to learn about unfurling a slice. So here's our program from the previous example. And after we do this, we're going to take a look at the documentation for a slice because I like you knowing about the documentation. So now we're going to create a new slice and we'll do a slice of string colon equals and uh, we'll use our slice of int. Sorry, I said slice of string, and I even put xs. We're going to do a slice of int. And some people will do xi. Caleb Doxy does it like this. ii, I, it's like, hey, I've got many ints there. I like the ksh, x. I think I've also seen him do the xi. But I'm going to take these values here, and I'm going to do my composite literal, which is my type, my curly braces, and then my values. So I'm going to put my values right there. I'm going to format that. I'm going to pass in xi here. Well, sum is asking for int, not a not not a slice of int, but int, an unlimited number of ints. That's what sum is asking for. And here I've given it a slice of int. This is static programming. An int is different than a slice of int. However, if I go dot 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 after my slice of int, it is going to take those ints and it's going to allow them to be passed in here. I call it unfurling because in my mind, I think of it as like, hey, take all the ints that are stored in here and just unfurl them and dump them right here so that they look like this. Really what happens in the background is the program recognizes that here we are wanting an unlimited number of ints, and here I have a whole bunch of ints, a slice of int, and when I pass in a whole bunch of int values here, it's going to turn them into a slice. So let's just take this slice here and use that same slice there. So it's the same slice that gets used. It doesn't actually unfurl, but that's the way I think of it in my head. So that's the way I talk about it. All right. So that's, uh, that's how you could use a slice of int when what you've asked for is a unlimited number of values of type int, unlimited number of values of type int right there. And that's totally going to run. Kapow! So we did that, and I'm just going to copy this and drop this into our course outline, and we will do that right here. Code. Code is good. And on the eighth day, he created code, and he saw that it was good. <laughs> uh, it's really in some ways, like, I think of creativity and building stuff as God's work. And by God's work, what I mean is God, if you look at the Western mythology... And I'm not, I'm not endorsing any one belief system here. I was actually raised by a couple of people who were, you know, uh, in recovery from being steeped in really intense belief systems. And so they sort of embraced all belief systems. <laughs> in the house I was raised in, there's good in, in most everything. Look for the good. My dad was a sociologist at the university and, and, you know, studied a bunch of the world's religions. So I'm not endorsing any one belief system, but I think of creativity as God's work, generally speaking, not coming from any one religious background. But God, in many religions and belief systems, created everything, created the world, you know, whatever name you have for God. And... Uh, and so God's work in some ways is that creating something. And so coding is creating something. It's building something. So it's God's work. <laughs> You're doing God's work right now. That's noble. Building something, creating something. I love building. I love creating. All right. So now, uh, now we're going to take a look at something else. You could actually pass in nothing. When you're asking for a variadic parameter, you could pass in nothing. Right? So it's zero to an unlimited number of arguments. So I'm going to run this and it'll run. And I passed in no argument. So variadic means zero or more of type int. So that's, that's kind of interesting. So I'll just put here also this code. And uh, unfurling my word, a slice of int. And in some ways, that's not the best way to talk about it because it misleads as to what's actually happening happening. It just uses the slice of int that you're passing in as an argument. But, it, you know, it's also asking for values 
of type int. <clears throat> so I kind of see it as unfurling in my head. Hopefully you see that distinction. Passing in zero or more values. So here we're passing in zero values, right? And uh, last thing I want to do is I just want to take a look at the language specification for variadic parameters. If f, and let me bring this down, whoop, 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 whoop. if f is variadic with a final parameter p, so the parameter is p of type, and you can see my recording equipment there jumping in the background. I'm going to get this out of the way. Go away. There we go. Now we just see a short one. That's kind of cool. That's my sound. If a variadic with final parameter p of type dot 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 t, within, then within f, the type of p is equivalent to type slice t. You know, right? Like it takes a second to read the language specification. If f is variadic, so the function is variadic with a final parameter p of type dot 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 t, so the final parameter so when you pass in a variadic argument, it has to be the final parameter. We could not, we could do this, right? X slice of int. We could not do this as string. We couldn't do that. And then if I passed in, you know, I don't know, nothing, I could pass in nothing there and then just James, right? And it's gonna blow up. Cannot use James type string as type int, but I could do this. Fine, right? It's fine. It likes that. It's no problem. So it has to be the final parameter because it's zero, zero or more. I think that's why. All right. So then within the function, the type of P is equivalent to type slice of T. So within the function, we saw that when we pass in all of these ints, and so we could pass in some ints. Ah, the devil's number. <laughs> we could pass in some ints and run that. And that becomes, uh, the final one becomes a slice, a slice of that type, right? The type, so slice of type T is equivalent to slice of T. If f is invoked with no actual arguments uh, for p, the final parameter, the value passed to p is nil, right? So nil means nothing's there. Nil is nothing. Otherwise, the value passed is a new slice of type slice of t. So not only is nothing there, but that slice didn't even get created. It's nil. So the slice will have been created, but the underlying array didn't get created, right? So the slice will have a length, the the uh, it'll have a cap. Let's take a look. Well, we want this one. Mm, yeah. Length. Cap. Format. We're passing in no. Oh, we are passing in ints. So that time, length and cap are three, and we have a slice of int. And let's not pass in anything. Format and run. And now we have a slice of int, right? And length is zero and cap is zero. So that underlying array didn't get created. This is pointing, this the slice exists, but it's pointing, it, the pointer is pointing to nothing, to nil. That underlying array didn't get created. So if it is in, if it is, if f, if the function f is invoked with no actual arguments for p, the value passed to p is nil. So that slice gets created, but the underlying array doesn't. Otherwise, the value passed is a new slice, right, of type slice t with a new underlying array whose successive elements are the actual arguments. A new underlying array whose successive elements are the actual arguments, which all must be assignable to, uh, to type t. The length and capacity of the slice is therefore the number of arguments bound to p and may, and p is the parameter, and may, be diff, may differ for each call site. Interesting. And then they give you an example, right? Uh, here, greeting, funk greeting, prefix is a parameter, and it's of type string. And who is a parameter? It's type uh, variadic parameter string, variadic string. Passing in nobody gets assigned a prefix. Passing in hello, Joe, Anna, Eileen. Hello gets assigned to prefix, and then Joanna and Eileen get assigned to who. 
Within greeting, who... <laughs> See, it's a little bit funny to read. Within greeting, who will have value nil in the first call and slice of string, Joanna and Eileen in the second. If the final argument is assignable to a slice type slice of T, the, it may be passed unchanged as a value for a variadic T parameter if the argument is followed by dot, dot, dot. In, the case, in this case, no new slice is created. So that's just unfurling. You can see that unfurling here. S is a slice of string, and it has James and Jasmine as values in that slice of string. We take that slice of string, and greeting is this func, which asks for who to be a variac parameter type string. So we pass in goodbye, which gets assigned to prefix, and then we uh, pass in S, and we unfurl it. That's my word, unfurl it. So basically we're just saying, hey, this is a slice of the type that you want, but I think of it as unfurling. Within greeting, who will have the same value as the same underlying array? Who will have the same value as S with the same underlying array? So the same underlying array. So this array right here that got created, right? It will be the same underlying array. This is a slice, which has an underlying array. So this slice has an underlying array. And this new one here will have the same underlying array. Same underlying array. Okay, so hopefully reading that spec you know, is uh, with me is helping you understand how they talk about the designers of this language, talk about the language. And uh, it's not easy going, and it takes a little bit of, like, uh, parsing ourselves, right? I found when I talk to people who are really brilliant with computers, like, incredible, that uh, they have a language which, you know, is like almost, a, it is a foreign language. It has a, a vocabulary and uh, syntax, <laughs> which is all its own. And so you have to kind of get used to even the language used to talk about programming languages. And so that's part of my intent with reading the documentation with you and with my students is to get them used to that so that you learn to understand uh, this language of programming, how we even just talk about programming, some of the different terms we use. So that's helpful. And I, I found that when I talk to people super brilliant in programming, like sometimes it's like they'll just shift into <laughs> binary. They shift into binary. And it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's just like all of a sudden they just saw them a lot tingal. And it's like, wait, wait, what was that thing you just said? <laughs> saw them a lot tingal? Oh, no, that's Indonesian. But, you know, they just slip into a whole new language where you're like, well, I don't, I don't know that word. So don't be ashamed or afraid to ask when somebody uses something, you know, a term, and you're like, yeah, what, what was that? Like if they say, you know, like, you know, you, you might say to them, if they use the word closure, you might say to them, what does closure mean to you? What does closure mean to you? And, uh, and having them explain it. Don't be afraid to do that. The only, uh, the only mistake in life is not asking questions. <laughs> How's that for a reflection? The only mistake in life is not asking questions. <laughs> See you in the next video.